Railroad flat cars are a convenient option to replace existing deteriorating bridge structures on low volume roads. Two or more flat cars are typically placed side by side to achieve the desired bridge width. Utilizing railroad flat cars as a bridge allows for rapid construction and greater cost savings compared to traditional practice. These benefits make them an attractive solution for rural communities in Indiana, as well as other states. Railroad flat cars have specific structural features that make them great candidates in bridge construction. They are typically constructed with one main girder running longitudinally down the middle of the car and two exterior girders on either side of the main girder. The longitudinal load carrying elements of a typical railroad flat car are the main girder, exterior girders, and stringers. When utilized as a bridge, the main box girder carries the majority of the traffic load. Railroad flat cars are designed to be supported at the locations where the wheels are connected to the flat car. They perform better as bridges if they are supported at the wheel trucks. The wheel trucks are located a few feet from either end of the flat car. Retired railroad flat cars are commonly used as bridges on low volume roads in rural areas. The following video provides recommendations for inspecting bridges constructed from railroad flat cars. Inspections performed on these bridges are similar to those performed on traditional steel bridges. These recommendations are intended to provide bridge inspectors with information about areas and details of railroad flat car bridges which require special attention. The primary members are those which carry the majority of the load. For typical railroad flat cars, the primary member is defined as a large girder located near the center of the car, exterior girders, which are channels found on either side of the main girder, may be considered primary members in specific cases. An example of this case is when the exterior girders are greater than 15% of the main girder stiffness. Exterior girders may also be considered primary members when utilizing a concrete deck that is composite with the main girder and exterior girders. These members shall be inspected carefully for damage such as cracking, impact damage, and corrosion. Welds on the box girder shall be inspected thoroughly for cracking. Bottom flange cover plates shall be inspected to evaluate if they are properly connected to the primary member. Built up members shall be evaluated for corrosion damage since they contain pockets for water and debris to accumulate. Secondary members are those which transfer load to the primary members. These are defined as the stringers, floor beams, and in most cases, the exterior girders. Although labeled as secondary, these members do participate in carrying the primary load. These members are more likely to be damaged due to their relative smaller size. Damage to the secondary members can consist of corroded, bent, fractured, or completely missing members. Although damage to a secondary member is not as critical as a primary member, it shall be reported in the inspection details and considered when performing a load rating. Railroad flat cars are designed to be supported at the wheel trucks where the wheels connect to the flat car. If the railroad flat car is being supported outside of the wheel truck locations, the ends of the flat car shall be inspected for damage such as bent or cracked members. Some railroad flat car bridges have intermediate supports located along the length of the bridge. Examples of these supports are steel sections and concrete pedestals. All intermediate supports shall be evaluated to ensure they are providing adequate support to the flat car. The support shall be inspected to evaluate if they are performing within reasonable limits of rotation and translation. Many railroad flat car bridges are not supported on typical bridge bearings. Instead, shims, dirt, or other miscellaneous items 
are typically used to transfer the load from the railroad flat car to the support. Since the bearings of most railroad flat car bridges are not standard, they shall be evaluated to ensure the bridge is safely supported. Some flat cars are cast integral with the end abutments. These shall be evaluated for cracking in the abutment and corrosion of the flat car. The deck shall be evaluated to ensure it provides an adequate roadway surface. Many railroad flat car bridges contain thin steel plate decks which are susceptible to cracking, local yielding, and complete fracture, causing holes to form in the deck. Timber decks shall be inspected for section loss. When debris and or water penetrates the deck, the top of the superstructure in these cases should be thoroughly inspected. If significant holes are found in the deck, the areas of the superstructure directly under the holes shall be inspected for corrosion damage. Guardrails on a railroad flat car bridge should be inspected for damage, such as impact damage. Required load posting signs should be clearly visible to oncoming traffic and should be displayed in both traffic directions. Many railroad flat car bridges are formed by placing two or more flat cars side by side and connecting them with some form of longitudinal connection. No matter the longitudinal connection type, it shall be inspected and documented whether or not there exists a rigid connection between the two cars. The rigidity or flexibility of the connection is important when load rating a bridge. Since many of these connections are not designed for standard loading, they are especially vulnerable to deterioration. Welded connections shall be inspected for cracks. Many connections contain pockets for debris and water to collect. These shall be inspected for corrosion damage. Connections which consist of a thin steel plate with little support shall be inspected thoroughly for cracking.